How about we talk through the riders that are actually planning to ride this versus some that won't be riding. The first rider I would want to be talking about when it comes to the favorites is one that won last year, for example, Filippo Ganna. He's one of those riders that I would consider the riders that want that constant power output, but he's proven already that even in prologues and so forth with a bit more corners, he can also get his uh, power output right. So where would you rate him on this parkour? Definitely knowing he hasn't had the best season so far. If Avon Paul had done the Vuelta, I would have Avon Paul as the favorite. But it has to matter, and the market suggests that it does. Ghana, the slight favorite at 225, ahead of Avon Paul in 250, Kung 750, uh, Pagacha 750, Bissigan 9, uh, Hater 15, and then it's the best of the rest. We've mentioned the upcoming changes to Zwift, including the ability to race your segment personal bests, and there's never been a better time to start training indoors, particularly with the torrential rain that grieved me upon my return to Australia, albeit temporary return. Zwift have announced a new smart trainer too. The Zwift Hub will be on sale from October 3rd in just over two weeks. Zwift are breaking down the barriers by making this new trainer cheaper and easier to set up than any other trainer on the market, even coming pre-installed with your cassette of choice. To sign up for notifications for when Zwift Hub goes on sale or indeed to find out more about uh, Zwift or to get a free seven-day trial, you can go to Zwift.com through the link down below i would say you look at ghana's prep he's done europeans third there well he came second to kung there last year before winning worlds he then did deutschland tour won the prologue and kind of chilling and that was after oh he had two three weeks after the tour de france where i must say he was quite disappointing and so that's the big question mark for me is I do wonder whether how much it matters and every second matters in world champs, six seconds mattered last year, how much benefit Ghana has had from his ideal prep into races like the Giro where he doesn't meet as stiff a competition and then the Tour de France, he was found wanting in both time trials by a lot and uh, but then he's had an ideal prep into Worlds again, it looks like. So that's just advantage him uh, over Avonapol. And Pagacha almost has had a better preparation than Avonapol, even if this might not have been, been his target. Kung did his prep, sorry, just quickly. He did Tour de Dubes. He's done some French smaller races. He was second at European Conti. Continental Champs, Bissica won that. That was a 24K course. He beat Kung by a second, the poor guy. Uh, and he did the tour as well, where he was way off the mark in both TTs. I don't know if he had a mechanical in either and didn't make the top 10. So I I think Ghana has to be the favorite, Benji. But again, I think he, he looks, for some reason, he looks really beatable this year. And it might have been the same thing as before last year when he lost Euro, Euro Chess, but to me, Ghana just seems a lot more beatable, and I think that is reflected in his price. Yeah, I think it's also reflected in his results this year, and that is also reflecting into what people expect from this race from a Ghana, but I also agree that he's one of the riders, if not the rider that I put on the top pedestal, because I've also got a lot of question marks when it comes to other riders, you know? Now, Remco Evenepoel, you mentioned him, for example. He's one of the riders with a major question mark for me where I don't know what he's going to be like knowing he arrived, I think, on Wednesday in Australia after coming from La Vuelta a España last Sunday, winning that, 21 stages. That's a significant amount of stages in one go. And limited rest afterwards limited preparation after that Vuelta towards these Australian championships, climatizing towards Australia and so forth. I also like, there's also the aspect, Pogacar, for example, did Quebec and Montreal. Evenepoel did the Vuelta. So I'm guessing that Evenepoel flew eastern direction to Australia, while Pogacar flew western direction to Australia. Do you think that has an effect? <laughs> Well, it depends on your flight got in. 
I had an evening flight yesterday from the Avenipol direction from Europe, and it, it's not been too bad. If you arrive in the morning, though, phew, you're in trouble for a few days. I don't know. I, d- I think the flight from Canada, yes, yeah, the- theoretically shouldn't be as bad if you came in that direction, Pagacha. The question is, like, Avenipol is a better time trialist than Pagacha, but Pagacha should be fresher. Uh, Pagacha also, I would think... Like, Pagacha's not in Tour de France shape. I don't mean he's not in good shape. I, I mean, I don't know either of their weights. But if I was Pagacha, why would you be trying to get to, like, the lightest possible weight for a World Championships where you need yeah. punch, where you need sprint, for a TT that's nine meters elevation per kilometer, not 27 meters elevation per kilometer, like Planche de Belfi. Aiden Paul, on the other hand, I don't, I don't know if you say maintained weight during the world, he'll be at like the, a pretty low weight. So how does that impact it as well? His TT in Leuven last year, I don't think he was the same weight as he is right now. So whether that hurts him on the flat, it didn't in the Vuelta. He smashed that. It's kind of hard. It's like horse handicapping in that like he wasn't against Kung. He was against yep. injured Roglic in the Vuelta TT, beat him by 45 seconds. How do you extrapolate that to an against a, a primed Ghana? I don't know. Weather, by the way, it's not Australian outrageously hot. In fact, it's been raining quite a bit. Um, so that's why I think the big dark horse for this TT and who I think will win if there is a single drop of rain, a single drop, I think Pagacha wins the World Champs TT because um, there's Ghana's. Ghana in the rain, in the corners, he loses like three seconds per corner. And even a pole, I'm a bit cautious maybe, and his form. Pagacha is, at least on the Tour de France opening prologue, just unreal. Uh, so I'm going with Pagacha if it's any moisture, and even a pole, I think, wins. Uh, otherwise, Ghana probably do the business now. What do you think? Well, before I go further, I want to I want to correct it. As my Flemish soul, I want to mention that it's technically not the Leuven IT last year. It's technically in Brugge. Just want to mention that so I don't have angry Flemish Sorry, people Brugge. in the comments section. <laughs> but I do think when it comes to Pogacar, there's also the aspect of like, this man's also focusing on the road race afterwards. And you say when it comes to rain, yes, on paper, that would benefit a Pogacar. Will he consider the rain as something where he's like... I need to make sure I survive until the road race. No, I, think I think that he, won't have an I effect. I don't think he would. Agreed. I think that won't have an effect in this race. I think Pogac is the kind of rider that would not consider that, that would not keep that in his mind, and that would go all out for the victory regardless of that rain being on the road. And I think we've seen that quite a few times in the past where in rainy races before a bigger goal, he would still go all out to try and win it. So in this sense, I would also see it that way. And... When it comes to the parkour as well, like 34 kilometers, not the craziest and so forth. Are there riders that you think might surprise that we haven't mentioned yet? Like, for example, Stefan Bissiger, when it rains, I I'm, I fear for his life, like based on the time trials we've seen from him this year. I think in that Paris time trial or something where he slid in the corner and then the Tour de France prologue where Crashed he twice, had right? trouble. Yeah, like, was that equipment related or was that Bissiger related? I mean, I don't know. You'd hope, you know, hope they didn't have it at 100 psi, but it didn't look good, <laughs> did it? In that Tour de France TT, you just literally couldn't corner at any speed. I don't know. I Bissig is a hard one for me because, like, where's Grant Thomas? Is he here? Where Where are you, Grant Thomas? Why isn't he doing this? Like, good I know question. he probably, he's probably like the shape he had the tour he, he's like i'm not carrying that for another couple of months um one thing on sorry the just one anecdote that is just one data point on the you know i said oh gonna be wow by more in imola i forgot to 2020 wow finished the tour de france literally four days before that like yeah. <laughs> so that was a crazy year i mean still i don't know maybe last year it was close on the flat I also want to mention a rider that we haven't talked about too much, but I feel like he's a dark horse for at least the podium, and that's Ethan Hayter. The only issue I have with him is that I don't know what his form is like after being in the Vuelta and stepping out just before the time trial when it comes to COVID. So the question is, did that impact him? 
I don't know. Did that impact him enough to set him off a, a few percentages when he comes to the time trial that comes up in the World Championships? I don't know. But a peak hater I would put on the podium here. Is that too high for Hater, or do you think that's a, a valid prediction for Ethan Hater? Because his time trials in the past have been pretty damn significant, and I feel like he's the kind of rider that can both have the explosivity out of the corners of it and both have the pure constant power output on straighter roads as well. I think that's right. Definitely a, a candidate for the podium. Uh, the Algarve TT. That had Avonapol and Kung there, and he came third. So he might need a complete collapse from a Kung, and then he slips onto the podium because it's there's a few people missing. Roglic is not here after crashing in the Vuelta. I'm not sure if he would have done it plus the road race. Thomas, as I said, was missing. Thomas, Magic TT. Dumoulin retired. This was supposed to be his big target. Um... I think it might have suited him. And of course, Wout van Aert is not here, who would have been a co-favorite. I don't know where he would have fit in in the odds, but he wouldn't have been far from Avonapol and Ghana, probably the same. 